scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are noble if there be any good report if there be any virtue and, and any praise he said think on these things and so god is saying i know the thoughts that i think towards you he said they are thoughts of good and not of evil this is god speaking and those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end a predictable end not an unexpected end not an unpredictable end this is the word of the lord hallelujah he says i know the thoughts that i think towards you the thoughts that i think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end hallelujah point number one The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us, according to scripture, is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please very quickly write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please everyone read one to read one more time This is the Bible. This is the truth of God's word. It says, for with long life, will I give him? Did he say, will I give him? That means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity. Are you getting blessed? It says, for with long life, will I satisfy him? And in it, I will show him my salvation. Number two, Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Please, media, you'll be really fast. You'll help us. There are lots of scriptures to look at. And all of them are important. We're establishing the first point tonight. That it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Exodus 23, verse 26. 23, 26. Hallelujah. Everyone read. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne. From eternity before you came. And it says the number of your days I will fulfill it. So that's the first point I want us to establish tonight. And listen, people, I want you to realize that 
um, I'm a human being. I understand that many of us are receiving these points with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of God's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one but the bible says forever oh lord thy word is settled a believer is not just one who has given his heart to the lord a believer is one who has submitted to the authority of god's word as the final say regardless of your experience this is what makes you a believer is you are not a believer just because you were born again you are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of God take precedence and become the final authority over your life. Say amen. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? You must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven. You are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband even if she does not like the way he's behaving even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage her covenant of being with him will force her to submit sometimes he may beat her he may be a foolish man but she has chosen as a submissive wife that i will submit to his authority and i will bear his son name that's what it means to be a believer to be a believer is not to love God when you can explain things. To be a believer is that in the midst of your joy, in the midst of your tears, in the midst of your clarity, in the midst of confusion, regardless of what happens in your life, the word of God stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life. Is God speaking to us? Are we growing as believers? This is a very mature teaching tonight. If you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of God above your life, you will backslide and you will run away from God. That's why we have many atheists today. Many of them were church children. Many of them were folks in Baptist and Presbyterian churches. But their lives were surrounded by so much confusion. And because they think that God has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds, after a prolonged period of disappointment that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits and their conclusion is that God is a liar and their conclusion is that the Bible is not true their conclusion is something is wrong there is a deceit somewhere but the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate He's slow to anger rich in love from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art God hallelujah it is God's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest do you believe that point number two make sure you're writing point number two the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time the Bible did not hide it from us it didn't leave it as a secret is clearly stated in the Bible that it is possible that although this is the desire it is absolutely possible supported by scripture that a man can die before his time open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life this is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight but it will test your love for god the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time ecclesiastes 7 17 quickly ecclesiastes 7 17 and psalm 55 verse 23 we'll look at those Ecclesiastes 7 17 the Bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted not only can the life be cut short the Bible shows us that someone's life can be added to 
and someone's life can be subtracted. 717 Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her. Okay. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read everyone. One to read. Why should thou die before your time? We are still going to revisit this verse. It says, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou what? Die. It's a question. It's just the, the B part I want us to focus on. Why? It's a question. That means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions, the same way God designed for everyone to be prosperous the bible says that um how did he put it now he says the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all but there are people today who love god and they are still poor is that true there are people today who love god and cannot afford to feed their children but it does not stop the fact that god is a loving god and he has shown a formula for prosperity why should thou die before your time so the bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time psalm 55 verse 23 55 verse 23 are we there all right go ahead and read everyone those outside we apologize looks like they are not seeing the projection but just follow us very carefully one to read shall bring them down into the pit of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what half their days they will not even live up to half their days now forget that he's talking about wicked people i'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added can be cut short can be multiplied can be divided can be subtracted this is the infallible word of god hallelujah so although god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time point number three this is a hard one now receive grace to receive it ready the bible re reveals that god is never behind us dying before our time write it down the bible reveals that god is never behind us dying before our time isaiah 65 verse 20 hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold
reveals painfully but truly that God is never behind us dying before our time 65 verse 20 of Isaiah go ahead and read one to read nor an old man that had not what go ahead and read This is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God. He says, there shall be no more infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days, for a child shall die a hundred years old. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, but as many as believed him, he gave them power to become. As many as believed him, he gave them power to become. Hallelujah. One more scripture. Ezekiel 18 verse 32. Ezekiel Shibakata Paroto Suprati Go ahead and read. One to read. Stop. For what? One more time. One more time. This is God speaking. One more time. Read on. Do you believe this? Please, listen, 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 listen. I'm a human being. Are you getting me? I understand the reality. I understand the pain. I, I understand the gravity. Are you getting me? Of, of um, you will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families, and this is consistent. I have been to mortuaries, I have prayed for people. We have lost loved ones in far and near, and all kinds of things have happened. But I choose to be a believer. I choose to be a believer. my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name it says for I have no pleasure in the death of him that died say it who say it prophet Ezekiel say it the Lord God wherefore as a result of the above turn yourselves and leave ye next point this is a very serious one and I want us to pay attention to it ready Satan comma the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills, and destroys. John 10, 10, please. Satan, the thief, is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills, and destroys. Write this before we look at the scripture in continuation. He has strategies through which he achieves this mission. 
Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills and destroys. He has strategies through which he achieves this mission. Continue writing. Topmost among the strategies are sicknesses, suicides, accidents. Write it down. Topmost among these strategies are sicknesses. You can write afflictions too. Suicide accidents these are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives these are his most common strategies 95 percent 95 percent of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities suicides accidents of all sorts fire all kinds of things destruction John chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus the son of the living god said i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly the thief satan there are many names that he's given in the bible he's given the serpent he's given the dragon he's given the thief he's called the accuser of the brethren he's called the adversary He's called the destroyer. And Satan has a strategy. Please let me have your attention now. Satan has a strategy. There is a series by the grace of God on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently. And under that series of angels, I'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called Satan praise the Lord I want us to look very carefully in that series there are a few things about Satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits, Satan is not the most dangerous? There are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain. They were deliberately not released because the Bible says if they are released, even the elect will not stand. The question is, at what point were they bound and what did they do? Hallelujah. When you begin to read, don't turn there, the book of Ezekiel 28. The Bible begins to speak of an ancient king. We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels. Look up. Many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the greek word angelio and it means a messenger let me tell you a few things look up please when ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called lucifer the bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms is that true is, are, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? It raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says, Thou which subdued nations talked about the making of Satan 
and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things i think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what I'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what I'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious Capone is still lingering around ABU are you getting what I'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point point? and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something I don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us but we'll have that series by the grace of God did you know that angels were once mortal beings are you getting what I'm saying now there was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth their dispensation ended and the ones who are with Christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation. Just like, imagine that Jesus comes now. I hope you know when Jesus comes, our dispensation is ended. But the program of God still proceeds. We do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas. But we know the Bible tells us there is, a, there is an age to come. And there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so i guarantee you we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization but not the last as far as creation as far as as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know who knows maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of god if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of god in that dispensation they will call us angels ah. 
I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise now watch this when we get to heaven there will not the Bible does not record the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven is that true so if in the earth in my earth life for instance this was my wife these were our children when we get to heaven we all become brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying we all become brothers and sisters i can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants and they can look at me and say wow who is this strange being but they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life it is this aberration that was that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation this is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said forget the people you are seeing now they have been before listen the dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them there was nothing called invisible and visible that concept did not exist are you getting my point the dispensations before us you could access the heavens and access the earth now it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning so adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation we never had the opportunity to see what we could do for instance there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction they recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if Adam did not fall and Eve would have had the opportunity because he still would have given birth. You understand? He would have given birth in his perfected state. We would have seen the son of Adam. A womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature. That's why in all of the dispensations it's only our dispensation that brought Jesus the son of the living God to come and die. Please, let's continue that's for another time i'm just trying to show you that the one you call satan lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation hmm. the king of tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with satan were the brains behind the building of the tower of babel they were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was that was why solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah geography today geography they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth they have found ancient castles did you know that there was a dispensation where where we are standing now was water not land the same way that place where is the mount of ararat where the the ark of noah rested where is it in the earth today we know everest to be the highest where is mount ararat where are the golds where is the temple of solomon that was built with pure gold you mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold let me tell you most of them are still intact they are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the hebrew word tohu wabohu 
is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit are we blessed very quickly keys to long life the first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest they all complement themselves you don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go no there are keys there are keys Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking, choosing, releasing words of life. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. And then we'll look at Proverbs 18, verse 21. Psalms 34, 12 to 14, and then Proverbs 18, verse 1. The first key to long life is to speak it. The first key to long life is to choose it the first key to long life is to release it hallelujah ready look up let's read psalm 34 verse 12 one to read what man is he that desireth what life and loveth what many days that he may see good read on keep what there is a relationship stop between your tongue it's communication and your life the bible says who is it that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14. depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13. who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die you oh. The Bible says, who is he that desires long life? Don't just laugh about what I'm saying. Because whether you think you are joking or not, the Bible says, and let it not be said before an angel, I made a mistake. Who is he that wants to activate longevity? It says, keep the... Please go to verse 13. 13, 13, 13. It says, keep thy tongue from what and your lips keep your tongue i know many of you have said kai people have begged they are exaggerating why do you want to speak please be real you be real in the earth way you will die like a chicken your reality must be the word it says i am the way i am reality i am absolute reality hallelujah proverbs 18 21 can we read proverbs 18 verse 21 one to read what will they eat the fruit of what no 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 it's in your bible it says they that love it shall do what death and life this is solomon a man who received wisdom from god he's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to and he said in my exploration of spiritual mysteries i found something death
and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? The Bible says, I set before you this day blessing and cursing. Is that true? Death and life. Here's my suggestion. I can't force you, but this is my suggestion. Choose life that you may live. Not wish it. Choose life. Koinonia. Choose life that you may live. Are you still a believer? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you death and life. But this is my advice for you. Choose life. I speak life. Oh my brother. I speak life Head and not a tail You will prevail I speak life Don't give up the fight For your life Hallelujah Everybody say after me I choose life outside can you shout it i choose life those standing at the back the back there can you say i choose life don't let the devil tell you i hope you know what you're saying say it i choose life he said let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so conquer fear i choose life when you speak you release it this is a voice activated planet nothing happens until sound is released i choose life send it to the atmosphere i choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow i choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen jesus said behold i jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth I stand at the door of your heart and I keep knocking. I cannot enter until your will permits me. As mighty as Jesus is, he respects the will of man. How much more Satan? Jesus, the son of the living God, the resurrected Christ, the eternal one, stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years. If that man refuses, he goes to hell. But he was knocking. So what do you think makes you think that Satan just steps into your heart? It's called deception. This is the foundation of witchcraft. It paints a picture that is not real. It makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to have wreak havoc in your life. Say it again, I choose life. Say it again, I choose life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say, did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Write very quickly, everybody. Key number two to longevity, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Biblical key number two to longevity. 
under the word fear write reverence reverence the fear open bracket reverence of the lord proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 proverbs 10 27 proverbs 10 27 everyone read one to read the fear of the lord yirat adonai reverence for god respect for him honor for him and his ways and what he represents prolongs days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened the bible says the fear of the lord there are two indexes given in the bible to measure the fear of the lord in a man's life number one obedience to his commands and number two service in the house of god obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the lord obedience obedience oh i love him i obey him proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11 i just want to praise you i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to me and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name on high. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11 For by me days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said go and tell Hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. And said, oh Lord, remember. How I have walked diligently before you. And the Lord sent Isaiah again. He said, uh -uh, uh -uh. I remember my faithfulness. And he went back and said, the Lord said, I have added. For by me, Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied. And the years of his life shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me. Don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of God. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you serve. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. 
there are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself hallelujah when five minutes without your breath you are gone it doesn't matter what your agenda is it's over the greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving God that's how you cheat death that's how you cheat the grave that's how you cheat death you don't cheat death by being afraid of it you cheat death by serving God victorious in life and victorious in death Paul says for for me to live is Christ and if I die it is still gain there is no loss hallelujah as you're sitting here the Lord is speaking to you you are living your life as young as you are you think you are too busy there are many of you outside as you are looking at my face the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight and saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to when will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life say I'm not a man of God I'm a pilot so what Father, oh God, on the altar of sacrifice, that I will serve you. I told God, this is all I do with my life. I don't have plan B. When I wake up in the morning, your kingdom come, oh God. That's all I do. Are you getting blessed? Service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for God. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best with all my life. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it as though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands you go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week and there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God that there's no service for the kingdom it's not part of their lives they come and they warm the bench and smile around and you tell them are you serving any believer that is not serving in a church not serving in a group your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom you don't deserve to live he says i shall not die but live but live there is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom god will kill a nation to preserve that man I travel all the time don't you think I don't know what I'm saying tomorrow we are on our way again to be there all the time I've seen all varieties of accidents I've seen all kinds of things I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations we have met armed robbers we were going to um, when we were going to Ogomosho, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the route to go towards Kogi. And we saw somebody reversing. They were armed robbers. Brothers and sisters, this gentleman speaking to you, I'm not a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm educated. But I want to tell you something. The fear of the Lord can prolong the days of a man that you spend your life serving God 
during the days of our fathers the popular song is lord here am i send me right now we are saying lord here am i give me i have come i finally arrived to collect see let me tell you don't just laugh if you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your christian experience you will be unfruitful in the kingdom i want to stand before my maker mm. I, I, I can only imagine what it would be like ah what's the song you know the song i'm trying to sing right surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine that on that day when I stand before him, when we are finally done and we have conquered the earth, depopulated the kingdom of hell and turned the hearts of many to righteousness, that through faith, after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness, we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation. And say, Lord, I am ready. And you appear before him to be absent in the body, the apostle says, is to be present with the Lord. And he looks at you and says, well done. You tried. And they take on that crown. And you see all the Matthias saying, we watched you all the while. While you were in that crusade, we watched you. While you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils. The family in heaven was watching. For some of us, while you were roaming around gossiping, and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going god said we, we were watching you too i am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came we were in your life a few weeks ago and when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus crusade, when he met me, I saw the way he was saluting me. And I, said, I was wondering, what was this for? And he called me and he said, Sir, about three years or thereabout, when you came into this campus, I was just a fresh student when I came in. And when you preached, I got born again. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And today I'm still standing and doing many things. Every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people. I say, Lord, thank you. I have no business being known. They don't need to know me. That I may decrease. That my face cannot heal anybody. My picture cannot bless anybody. There is one mightier than I. He's the one I live and I spend my entire life serving. Please, I speak to you as a servant of God tonight. Think about your life. Think seriously about your life. And the way you are ignoring the things of God as though there is something better. I'm not saying be a pastor. Be an addict enough. When was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel? How many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Possible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. 
the psalmist said better is one day i rather be a doorkeeper i'm so desperate to serve you although i'm a king i choose to be an usher a sanctuary keeper than a celebrity somewhere these were men who understood god they understood the ways there are some of you here you think you are too big to join the protocol you are too big to do this you see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools unfortunately most preachers have preached service not as a proof of love for god but as a way to get things from god it is true that if they obey and serve him there are benefits but brothers and sisters hear me beyond getting things it is a proof of love so if your work is to bring this water you bring it with all sense of honor not just like you are worshiping a man oh it's a privilege to serve in the house of god it's a privilege if you are to clean the chairs you are cleaning the chairs and say lord it's a it's a privilege it's a privilege you can do without me you have chosen to do with me you are supposed to bake the cake you are seated and you know you have grace you say no i need to join the welfare department i must spend my life I, I need to contribute you are excellent in graphic oh the media needs me service 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 whether you are in zaria or not find a church find a group find a fellowship find a, a congregation of believers many of us are looking for geo and mama that's the only condition you have given God to serve him. Lord, I will serve you if I will be the mama of the ministry. I will serve you if you give me the name of my parish. The name of your parish is nothing. Let it be your passion. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? I'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit. Because I don't want you to waste your time. Please get back into the mystery of kingdom service. Get back. You spend your time serving a guy because you love him you go to his house you wash his clothes you cook you iron and he says is it not too much you say this is the least i can do for you is it to express my love i'm i'm, I'm not embarrassed call me a fool it's true eh? if loving you is a crime let me be a criminal look at what you are saying look at what you are saying shame on any believer who is saying that i'm telling you i say it again shame on any believer that because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Skapaka prondo sopro silia paharatu sufratia. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of God. His commandments are not burdensome, brothers and sisters. Let's hurry up. Key number three to long life. Engaging the mystery of the blood. Key number three, let's hurry up. Engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding. engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding there are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance number one in the book of exodus chapter 12 it was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus revealed it to us 
in the communion the communion in the new testament he began to teach us the mystery of the communion and then number three the mystery of what the bible calls blood sprinkling that the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them first corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30 we may not have time to read all but let's see how far we can go help us media first corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30 paul is teaching the church in corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me next verse it says after the same manner he took the cup here and there 25 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye show the lord's death till he comes 27 wherefore whosoever now listen shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily open your eyes i want to show you a mystery unworthily it says this sacrament there are two sacraments that jesus left to the church one is the sacrament of the communion the second is the sacrament of baptism water baptism two of them are still valid they are important today it says whosoever shall take up the cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of what the body and the blood of the lord here comes the mystery 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what he can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of jesus christ relieves life and because he's, he's eating it unworthily he will get the opposite of it next verse 30 read please one two read stop for what cause for the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment for this cause how many people how many how many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them have you ever had any death and they told you that ah this death it was communion that killed the man have, is it in your bible for this cause did he say few many many are weak for this cause the cause of not discerning the lord's body the cause of not respecting it for this cause of not giving it the honor it says many are weak you believe the bible right many are what sick and many sleep wow for this cause trivializing the body of christ not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we are not going here we don't have the time we have to move on to other things i'm just giving you references exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death the bible calls it the destroyer that when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel it will leave and trouble you not hallelujah praise the lord key number four honor to parents key number four let's be fast please honor to parents open bracket both physical and spiritual ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3 honor to parents 
both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life one to read is projected one to read honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 was the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 20 20 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his robe and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointed how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of god you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of god just talking and smiling the bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical he said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor and respect i honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please i don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your wivon up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she'll say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of god how many of you pray for ministers you stand there criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer you stand there saying i always knew i always suspected the way i've been looking at that man you see that continue the bible says he that cursed his father and his mother his lamb his life will be taken away to obscure darkness how many have died as a result of this honor when a father fights his son he loses his honor when a son fights his father spiritual or physical he loses his life that's why many people sadly to say many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries break out and jeopardize the life of the Jew thinking God called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father his lamb will be taken are we learning number what now number five walking in wisdom the fifth key to long life walking in wisdom Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16 those outside if you are still with us say amen god bless you all right proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16. walking in wisdom 
walking in wisdom foolishness can take a man's life foolishness can cut short a man's life walking in wisdom hallelujah the bible says happy is the man that what finds wisdom that means you have to look for it and the man that get it understanding 14 for the merchandise of it are better than silver and they gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her 16 length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor if you embrace wisdom it will also open you up to long life look at me how many people do you know who cannot drive hello they cannot drive and then they go and carry a truck and kick it because they are trying to impress their colleagues are you seeing how foolishness cuts short the life of people and then they go to the road they have given the spirit of death unrestrained access how many people drive their cars foil is leaking down are you getting what i'm saying foil is leaking and they don't care there are people who who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus they connect it directly to the carburetor and from the bus, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running they are smiling how many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal the tire is so it is the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight that's the degree to which the car is disaligned and yet he plans to travel to lagos the bible says wisdom is profitable to direct are we blessed a man takes beer alcohol and tells you can i give you a ride he say really you get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut life wire they dry their clothes and smile they have been doing it i i know how to do it no 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 i'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives you plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie there are many of us the way you own your car there is something only you know how to touch you touch the wires and then something down you just touch it and it sparks cas, cas, and then the thing starts you've been doing it for many years preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you will see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school Is God teaching us wisdom? There are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil. You buy one jerry can of foil and keep it closed. There are babies there. There are all kinds of things. People are inhaling it. There are others you never eat well. I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives. You never eat well. There's no difference from the day God, you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you. There is no difference. Look at mechanics. Look at what they eat. Same thing. One lady comes with, 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 with a lele or something and serves them. That's what they eat every day, every night. They take tea in the night. See, that kind of unhealthy, that's why the life expectancy level of Africa is about, is it 30 or 40? scientifically proven we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things 
It's only God that can tell the kind of risks people take every day. Every day. There's food on fire. You made yam. The water is boiling. You want to use your hand to carry it out. Can't you look for a spoon? If the spoon is missing, can't you be patient? Why must you cut you? You came complete. Why must you go back with one hand? Yes, you will make heaven, but is that a rich life? Is that a rich life? Why will you cut short your life? Because of carelessness. It's God speaking to us. Number six. The sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We're getting deeper now. We're getting to the area where we're going to pray. Luke 10, verse 19. Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold. See. Don't be ignorant. I give you power to tread upon serpents. Upon scorpions. And over how many? How many? All the powers of the enemy. It says and nothing shall by any means harm you i have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately he said with wise counsel make war with wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default. When the spirit of death is in an environment, what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity. This is the standard operation. There are a few exemptions, however, but the standard way the spirit of death, the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic. A subtopic under point six, the reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft, I just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 proverbs 1 11 and then psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here Give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. Let's hurry up. Everyone read. Want to read. There shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what? Pass through fire. Or that uses divination. Or an observer of times. An enchanter. Or a witch. Next verse. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. God himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world. There are enchanters. There are stargazers. There are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men. The church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of satan nahum chapter 3 verse 4 just look up so that um since it's projected one to read because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot the what mistress of witchcraft 
that sell what? Look at what she sells. She can she look at her goods. The way you sell pure water. The mistress of witchcraft. And say you can come and meet me. And I will give you Africa. I can give you this village. I can sell that soul to you. It's in your Bible. It says she sells what? Nations through her wardom. Her fraternity with human beings. That means human agents come to meet her. I want access to a territory. And what does she sell again? Families. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? That there are witchcraft activities that sell families. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23. It's a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? All right, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay, it's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. Where's my handkerchief? They sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice word for as long as you just say, God, I'm here and I love you. Everything is all right. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting. They are everywhere. Let me tell you. Especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbean. You were born an African. You belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God will not need to go through this. But for now, we must pay that price. Are you there? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Next verse. Let's look at it quickly. And will ye people, oh, and will ye what? Me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread. To slay what? Read that part. To slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them, they killed their children and an indignation rose and the war ended. It's still being practiced today. Men who give others for their lives. I prophesy to you, any man that invokes your name on any altar, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, they will carry their dead body from that altar. I say it again, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that any charm, any altar that invokes your name, to die the death of another. May my God visit them with judgment. Next, next verse. Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows. Wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls. To make them fly. Watch this. Look at the mystery of witchcraft. And I will tear them from your arms. And we let the souls go. Even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. When verse what now? Two verses left. Your handkerchiefs I will also tear. Your instruments of divination. Those, those mediums that you use in covens. That you flip and call the names of people. And somebody is walking peacefully on the street. All of a sudden, somebody comes with a knife and kills him. And they say he just died. No, sir. He did not just die. An invocation happening in the realm of the spirit. I 
and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that i am the lord your god let's read 22 because i can't read all those ones whom i have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those governs tonight catch fire may those governs catch fire Proverbs 1 verse 11 Proverbs 1 verse 11 Watch this If they say Come with us Let us lie and wait for what? Let us do what? Let us wait for blood Let us lock privately for the innocent Without cause Meaning they did not do anything But we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit ah. the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12. when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read He said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us verse i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because God knows that alone we cannot make it. There is an advantage that wicked spirits have. They have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And so he gave us angels. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. Don't turn there. Just write it. Joshua 5 verse 13 to 14. Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel. 
project for us project for us second kings 19 verse 35 second kings 19 verse 35 while she's doing that in the book of daniel chapter 10 when you read from verse 13 the bible says that archangel michael contended with the prince of persia he was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy daniel but daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer when we pray we activate angels when we speak we activate angels second kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the lord went out and smote in the camp of the assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses one angel imagine how powerful they are about 185,000 people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies they fight to preserve our lives preserve our bodies preserve our destinies Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 read verse 11 want to read for he shall give what his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in psalms 103 verse 20 psalm 103 verse 20 please begin to prepare the oil there's there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly very quickly quickly bring the oil for me please don't open it yet just bring it these are the instructions that the lord gave me psalms 103 verse 20 go ahead and read one to read bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do what his commandment how do they walk hearkening they walk at the instance of his word they walk at the instance of his word as you pray and declare the word you activate them you activate them you activate them as you speak God's word the moment they hearken to the word they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the lord revealed to me in my place of retreat and he said teach my people these are the keys to long life these are the keys to long life you can live long and the lord gave me an instruction he said according to the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the oil anoint my people i don't do foolish things give me the oil i'm not one of those men of god that just does things impulsively and the lord gave me an instruction he said when i was done with that retreat i should come back and based on two scriptures the lord gave me isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Mande brando she bros satalan de cras cobras de lava she bros zetetete paladabaya and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder it shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that hunt your soul unto death it shall come to pass 
that by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth the avenger of men that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing there are charms that must be broken because of the anointing there are people sentenced to death sentenced to accidents sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil the second scripture exodus chapter 12 please please everyone turn there i sense the anointing of the spirit very strongly right now please turn there this is the instruction that the lord gave me make sure everyone is participating right now no matter how far those following us online they can get oil if, if they have access to verse 7 please verse 7 and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel go to verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance I am the Lord this is what the Lord told me in the secret place he said I'm arising as a mighty man the blood of the innocent Christ before me that's what the Lord told me and the Lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations and the Lord told me vengeance there will be vengeance upon witchcraft I had the Lord and he revealed this to me my eyes was open in the spirit and I saw like a cloud moving across territories and the Lord told me by the mystery of preservation you preserve my people that's why I'm carrying this oil is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time inside and outside pray hallelujah can we have the plates please very quickly lift your voice and say after me in the name of jesus come on say it like a believer in the name of jesus every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood i command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray i shall not die but leave to declare Hallelujah. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. We just have two prayer points. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own. In the name of Jesus, I come against you. Lift your voice and speak. Stargazers, necromancers, those that trade the souls of men, they cut short destinies through up. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare the seal of the blood over my life, my loved ones, my going out, my coming in. No accident shall take my life. No terrorist shall take my life. No sickness shall take my life. I am secure in Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your loved ones. No death. No death. No death. The destroyer cannot plague my life. The destroyer cannot plague my family. The destroyer cannot plague my destiny. My going out. Preserve. Coming in. You are looking at this olive oil but this is no ordinary oil the lord instructed me to pray through the night over this oil and release the power of preservation that it becomes the mystery of the blood in the spirit and that's exactly what i've done and lord i lift this in the name of jesus i come under this apostolic office in the name of the lord jesus and i declare that over this territory of zaria over koinonia over our families the plague of death will not find expression it will not cut short the lives of people in the name of jesus christ father let this oil lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance in the name of jesus let the terrestrial become celestial let the earthly become heavenly and lord let this carry preservation power in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and bless him. Great is my God. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised. Yeah, yeah. Are you Lord? You are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Give him praise. Now 
Gambrido Jala Variata Capradida Bagosoto Balada Bacariana. Sabala Variata Banana. Sembrona Capradila Variata. Bless the name of the mighty one. Heaven and earth adore you, angels bow before you, you're beautiful, yeah. you're beautiful, the heavens and earth adore you, angels bow before you, you're beautiful. You're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, yeah, 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 yeah. You're wonderful, you're wonderful, you're wonderful in this place, you're wonderful. You are glorious, you are glorious, glorious, you are glorious, glorious, you are glorious, don't be tired of worshiping his presence. Glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward. Say, you are glorious, my God. Beautiful, you are. Help me say. Father, we declare that we love you from everlasting to everlasting. You alone are God. Let the name of the Lord be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. And let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We praise you with the sound of the instruments. We praise you with the clashing of the cymbal. We praise you with voices lifted up. For you alone are God. You sit upon the circle of the heavens. And you rule with the scepter of righteousness. 
Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Your mercy is being new every morning. In majesty ride, O great one, in the midst of they that love you. From everlasting to everlasting, we declare that the nations will sing your praise. The nations will lift your voice. The nations will lift your banner. And every tribe and every tongue and every nation will acknowledge that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For you are glorious in all the earth. You are glorious. You are powerful. You are powerful. You are powerful. Ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. Like the dew of heaven, oh God. That brings freshness to the grass. Let the heavens be open and let the rain fall upon us. In the name of Jesus we bless you majesty I acknowledge you the doer of every great thing blessed be the name of the Lord some may trust in horses and others on chariots but we will trust in the name of our Lord and they sang the songs of Miriam and they said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. We bless you for your healing, for your deliverance, for the power of your word to change and build, for authority, for your presence. We give you praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, we enthrone you. Sing it from your heart. And we proclaim. His presence is mighty in our midst tonight. Standing here in the midst of all. We raise you high with our praise. Lord, build your throne. And as we worship you, come and build your throne. And as we worship you, as we worship you, Lord, 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 Lifted high tonight, your people have come to receive and to be changed. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your power will be available to heal, to deliver, to bless. That your word will transform us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back and it's good to see everyone. Those of us standing, we really apologize. Appreciate all the workers and everybody for your diligence, even while I was away. Thank you so much. And um, I want to appreciate all of us again for consistently 
submitting ourselves to the dealings of the spirit there is a formula for impact there is a formula for carrying heavy weights of the presence of God there is a formula for affecting a generation and what is happening to you is the building that will lead to that you are satisfying that condition and you may not look like it now but by and large you will see the beauty and the glory of the Lord arise in your life hallelujah praise the Lord God is taking us somewhere and we give him praise for where we see him taking us hallelujah once again I welcome every one of us thank you so much for being around I want to talk to us tonight in a way that I hope will challenge us this is a preparatory teaching for the series that we're about to start next month and um, I trust that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus tonight's teaching is very important and I am praying I am praying that not only do we pay the price to come here every week and listen to the messages but I'm praying and hoping from the depth of my heart that we are submitting ourselves to these teachings it's amazing how lives are being transformed and changed hallelujah and I pray in the name of Jesus that we will keep changing hallelujah lay your hands on your head and pray in tongues and say father do something in my mind and my life please pray now is not the time to stare around carelessly be focused and pray lay your hands on your head and pray do something upon this mind I allow you to flow through me let my mind not be a limitation to my destiny there is a voice that you have given me that my generation must hear and everything that constitutes a limitation must leave hallelujah hallelujah last week we listened again to the message hallelujah that i had preached about allowing the kingdom of god to find expression and in that teaching i began to say how that the limitation of the impact of men is not the power or the ability of god but our mind from the realm where we allow our wills our emotion and our intellect to come under submission to the government of Christ and that if we can satisfactorily do that there is no limit to which God will be able to use us hallelujah Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 let's begin tonight I want to establish a few things and then we'll pray you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward that's what he's doing in someone's life tonight you God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom you may think God has favorites 
God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny. And the degree to which we come into alignment with God's precepts is the degree to which it looks like God is tilting towards our direction. It's very important that I say this because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything. Among preachers, the difference is clear. There are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make impact. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising armed robbers and cowards and thieves and, and nuisance to society. In the world of impact, there are those that the hand of God is mighty upon. They are shaking lands and territories. And yet there are others scrounging and scrambling for relevance. What is responsible for this difference? Could it be that God decided to choose others? Could it be that God just hated others? Is that really it? What would be responsible, brothers and sisters, for a man who rises up as a nobody? The map of your village not being on the map. And yet you rise to be a global phenomenon. Where people say, thank God you were born. Thank God you did not die. Blessed is the womb that produced this child. What makes that difference? That a man will be born a pauper with rain falling. And yet at the end of his life, he is a generational blessing. His name becomes an access key to favor. That every time you say, I am associated with Sam. They say, which Sam? Because of that, access is given. What is responsible for this difference in society? It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know. It is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. The key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word influence 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 the mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the lordship of christ everybody say influence influence will do more than tracts will do influence will do more than crusades will do influence at every given point in your life your decisions your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model consciously or unconsciously and therefore the key to bringing earth our territories cosmos to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can by our influence Buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology. Like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. 
if we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it, it shines. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until Jesus comes. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married. Christianity is an ideology. The faith life is an ideology. It's a movement. It's a cause. There is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind and he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. His emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. And that's what we call being born again. The establishment of the reign and the rule of the Christ in the hearts of men. Not just coming for altar call. call. Altar call is not enough to get you born again. It gets you saved. But to be born anew and to be transformed, the Christ needs to be established in your heart. The degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom, is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first, the Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitation is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to, they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One, to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One, to read. For as he 
thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty men in this place. And he won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. When you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries. You will find a reason to say Lord I thank you. The training process is always difficult. Because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it. Because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens number one a father and a son platform a transfer from a father to a son number two a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice number three a transfer from a teacher to a student you cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague no sir it's against the law of impartation that means every time you want to receive 
One must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser. Even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching and immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry, limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light, no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down. Not for too long. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I walk around, as I travel around, I've had the privilege of traveling to different territories. I study culture a lot. In fact, whenever we travel for administration, if time allows us, we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever, Touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into. And concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up otherwise you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you that's what has happened we have a generation of irresponsible people spiritually irresponsible mentally irresponsible physically irresponsible there has been a transgenerational game of blaming people one generation blaming another for their failures one generation blaming another nigerians blame government africans blame their parents they blame institutions our refusal to turn and say what can i do to live where i am gideon was a little boy who was hiding he had of the miracles that happened and now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says oh thou mighty man of value can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation let me tell you something my message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement if you have that kind of mindset here your first assignment tonight is repent can we have the windows open i think the rain is hallelujah 
Everyone say in the name of Jesus. I take full responsibility for my current position spiritually, financially, socially. I take full responsibility and I am willing to pay the price to change that pattern. Say it one more time in the name of Jesus. I refuse resentment. I refuse blaming people. I make up my mind that from today I take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life. That's right. That's the, the decision that begins to change your life. You say this among your colleagues and they will insult you. Some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this. Because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God. That foolish man was a herbalist. But what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers. There are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. Zika pratoko soto baladaba. Pray. Pray. I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. I'm a lady, that's why. They should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed. That's why. I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and he didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. 
Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies, determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again. Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter I believe 4 4 verse 23 Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family you can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell is that serious keep your heart it is your responsibility keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor James. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God will use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise. Let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having. In it, I teach on the power of decisions. Do you know the difference between a decision and a wish? This is it. I want to drink water. It's a decision. That's the water there. I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire. I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish, I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and think, they think we're idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. 
Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law, the law of manifestation. And that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset. The inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Ki or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right, of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell the may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, he will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul, find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating. And quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it. And he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see it dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, 
do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. If I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is, just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself, not knowing why he's successful, he thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people from you. And if you do not take the time to study it and change and say, I'm like that. My mother never had any friend, only me. You see it, the transference. Let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one, is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough, that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage, that there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard, a status quo. Are you getting my point? It's a terrible mindset, a terrible mental state of being because it produces dangerous fruits and we're about to see a few of them. Let me tell you, the foolishness of many people in society, from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders, is motivated by this poisonous mindset, subtle but dangerous. Low self-esteem. What does low self-esteem do? Low self-esteem, when it is matured in a man, becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem are we blessed so a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair she can be beautiful and guys will not see her wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000 and that becomes a goal she's under pressure borrowing money trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo is God speaking to us so we have preachers with their clubs and societies right that is based on something they believe they have to do to match up so a man of God thinks I can teach but I can't prophesy and his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow 
Are you getting my point? Even to the point of witchcraft. And when he gets it, he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me, I will be like so, so, so man of God. Are you seeing that now? A poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director. And his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months, have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. To prove. And you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us? Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing. And some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that... Oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> Is God speaking to us? There are many preachers. They start preaching now. And they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who. As a proof. Right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages, we carry our pain, we carry our backgrounds, mix it with the anointing, mix it with ministry, and off we go misleading many people. Yes. So he comes to me, and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people, and just say, God bless you, how are you? No. Because if how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you. Give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband ten times. And you drove him ten times. Because something in your mind. You live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, guy, guy you represented us. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change or live in that false sense of success.
There are some of us moving around lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that all of those things, some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody, the clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in, that mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half caste. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus. I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a Jeep. Say, Mary, bought a Jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out find out what and you see when you are determined to find out things you will always find something is that true low self esteem number two is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words uncultured use of words Psalms 141 verse 3, an uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. It said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny. That which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life. Is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. 
Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. Ah, do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Kotonou, and it's a lie. Pressure to say things that should not be. Set a watch. Put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, don't, I don't know you, or don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father's been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh god over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um i'm i'm, I'm we're going to get married let me just calm down i'm trusting god for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say i'm not doing and the friend say how far our marriage hey, god is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of 5 million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? That this person did this. She was so disappointed. She's still been disappointed. She still did this. And I said, shame on you. One. Because you were, was it not in a room? Was it outside? It happened. You went to the room. You were also tempted. You will not accept that part of your role. The role you played in seducing him. You, are you saying you did not see the advancement coming? You were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it. Is that not how it happens? 
he was holding you doing all kinds of things you were enjoying it when you felt it will now cross the boundary what you call boundary you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself i'm not justifying immorality i'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded uncultured communication and the way she was talking to me i know she has told more than hundreds of people right there and you 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 destroy now listen we are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communications. Unguarded communications. Matters that don't concern you. It's amazing. You hear people talking about their father, talking about their mother, talking about their sister. A lady met me and said, ah, that uh, her sister just got married though. Sharp, sharp, she's now pregnant. I said, shut your mouth. You, are, you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication. Look at what drives your mind. Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to people say, may God forbid. I rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian. No, uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower and blind f buying flower and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13. You are just coming innocently. You don't know. You, you think she's a nice lady. And the guy said, eh. Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us, listen. Mindset, listen to me. It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White, right now that Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news, that Creflo Dollar asked his congregation to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry, there are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Call their fathers witches. Listen, give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth and say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut and to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this, stand up to mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering on guarded use of your mouth. You just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes. Are we growing tonight? Some of these issues look little, but this is what makes leaders out of people. Notice that leaders are calm people. They are people who evaluate things. They are people who look into things. Because one day, somebody is going to say something about your life, your ministry, your business, something. Is that true? I remember when one woman, I think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia, we emphasize the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. He said, that's witchcraft, that's signs of the end time. And the person was hoping that I would respond to it and I just kept quiet. I said, glory be to Jesus. And that was the end of it. Because sometimes... 
I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. Somebody comes to gossip to you, and immediately he finishes the gossiping about Tosin. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry weight. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why? What is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him everybody will come and say we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tithe of his billion there are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous don't think everybody is struggling there are people seated quietly here i know them There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Grace of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office. Yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was given caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life and the most sincere woman that my neighbor's friend 
I've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. I, I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless? Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth. My mouth will not be the reason why I would destroy the life of another. Anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings. In Israel, if you curse somebody, they will kill you because they understand the implication of words. Is God speaking to us tonight? Many of us have made ourselves cheap. When you started out, people respected you because you were a man of few words. Right now, you have become a talkative and gradually you see that your respect has been going down. Have you seen people like that? One moment they are rest. In fact, when they come, they say, sir, good afternoon. At the end of the conversation, the woman says, okay, my son, I've heard about you. Whereas where you came, she said, come, man of God, I, I covet the grace upon your life, but you threw away your honor. Everybody... Write this word down, honor. Honor. These are the principles that bring honor to your life. Value honor more than money. Value honor more than reputation. Money cannot give you honor, but honor will give you blessings. Honor. The ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor. Uncommon principles that will make you exceptional. Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man think it, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which make kings. That which make nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind? When I find out that there is something flawed in my life. How do I start? Now I found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that then there is a need for transformation in that area of your life transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept there are some of us here god has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings but something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives favor brings money to your life wisdom throws it out of your life there are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset you go to preach in a church you don't study the way the church setting is you just stand and run your mouth and say anything anyhow to anybody you go to a church that is predominantly elders your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience you go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I paid the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. 
because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself, but this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing, but this mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life and the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person, you just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so. This and that and that. There was a young man that was standing well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come and the young man just stood there. And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinoni, I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of... No, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, this person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say lord jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? 
Never you stop your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take, hello, what are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar, oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life. And I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Who say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodun, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least the people are joining a line that is already embarrassing for me because I know some of the people standing in that line it's not like there are some helpless people but they humble themselves and they stand and to be able to do that I give them a hug I talk to them with courtesy all our little children that come to hug me here I honor them that's why immediately after service they come around you the little children sit near you as they are sharing the grace they are running away from you something about your life is driving them that's how a business partner will look at you and say you don't have the skill for business but there is an attitude there's something about you I want to do business with you there is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you and you step into favor 
favor that you will never recover from. There are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened. But because I honored my way to them, I treated people with courtesy. And I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed. Is God speaking to us? The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man, either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now? You cannot respond to us. Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level. Listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws. And do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me. Me. God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice. Endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. 
the favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. Endurance, endurance, endure hardship as a faithful soldier of Christ. You went to win souls, nothing happened. You went for that meeting, you thought the power of God would move, nothing happened. And you seem to live in shame. Don't worry. Keep fasting. Keep praying. I know you went and it looked like they dread you. You went to sing and you lost your key. You lost your voice. You embarrassed. Don't worry. Let them keep laughing. Don't be under pressure to prove anything. And say, no, it's, I can sing. Oh, what happened that day is I had kata. Forget about all those explanations. Kata or no kata, continue. A day will come. You will be noted for persistence. And your critics will become the advocates of your lifting. When you endure, if you give up, you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution. But endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary. And now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure i know you have been taught that if it is of god it must come cheap and easy no sir there is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown this is a very deep teaching you must endure we are going to pray oh i will endure no matter what it will take I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one naira in your pocket, but endure. Keep tightening. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home. Endure. Some of you, you go and receive, as old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. 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 You don't have suit to wear. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Endure. Is God speaking to us? I choose to endure. This is how this ministry came. To see what God is doing today. And to see where he brought us. And to see where he's taking us. Endurance. Endure the mockery. Endure the shame. Never be under pressure to prove yourself. At every given point in your life, those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you, you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet.
as a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come. His honor will come upon your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the word tonight. Pray. The mental composition that makes you victorious. The mental composition. I give you a guarantee with the integrity of God backed up. It will make you exceptional. It will make you notable. Are you praying, Koinonia? Hallelujah. I like you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I bring my mindset under the Lordship of Christ. That every mentality in me that is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness. I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset is the key to the increase in the anointing. Is the key to the Holy Spirit doing mighty things in your life. The key to you being a champion. The key to you breaking cultural barriers. The key to you being mighty. I don't care where you are now. I don't care what is wrong now. Endure. Be strong. Be strong. Hold on. Be strong. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. The name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ. The resultant effect of this transformation is called the mind of Christ. Then you become an envoy. Then you master life. Then you become a champion. Men honor you as if you charm them. Everywhere you go, you are a magnet. And people are saying, what? I'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life. Please give us Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Mm. Oh Lord, I pray that your people will listen. Permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The word let there is permit. Allow it. God is saying change. I want to make you mighty. You came from Kogi state. I know there is witchcraft. But can you adjust your mind and see a champion that I will make out of you. I know you are weak. The whole family stays in one room. But can you make that shift in your mind? Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, Koinonia. Let this mind be in you. Upgrade your mindset. Don't let culture cheat you. Don't let your past cheat you. Hallelujah. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I reject inferiority and low self-esteem. You have made me great. I'm not cheap. I'm not a local champion. I stop trying to do things. Pray, pray, pray. I stop trying to do things to prove a point. I stop trying to borrow money to look rich. I stop trying to tell lies to look like I'm making progress. 
I reject a life of falsehood. I move gradually, gradually, level by level. Pray. I reject low self-esteem. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No culture, no CGPA, no financial level, no challenge will ever make me feel bad. Job or lack of job, admission or lack of admission, marriage or lack of marriage, let it never get to you and make you feel inferior. Pray, Satan the Lord rebuke you. I refuse to feel inferior. The favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord. A champion on my way to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this prayer point, I'd like you to pray it with all your heart. Say, Lord, my mouth has brought too much trouble in my life. It will not continue like this. I set a guard over my mouth. I have gossiped my way to trouble. I have lied my way to trouble. I have, I have joined the heads of people and friends. I've done a lot of things that have destroyed people. Go ahead and pray. I offer my mouth, my tongue, my lips. From today, it becomes an object of blessing. An instrument of lifting. Pray. I add character and a healthy mindset to my anointing. I speak aright. I speak only when I need to. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. May I not destroy my friends with my words. May I not destroy my destiny helpers. May I not drive away my instruments of breakthrough may i not scatter my family with my words may i not destroy ministries may i not destroy my academics may i not destroy my anointing with bad words uncultured words hallelujah hallelujah number three we're going to pray say lord from today i have respect and honor for all men regardless of who they are regardless of who their parents are grant me grace to demonstrate genuine respect and honor for people those higher than me my contemporaries and even those lower than me lift your voice and cry to god I repent of my rude nature. I repent of my pride and arrogance. Lord, I receive grace. May courtesy open doors of access to me. May honor open doors of access to me. Are you praying? Put a guard, oh God, on my lips. I want to be exceptional. I want to be exceptional. I want to shorten the journey to my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, hold hands around. We are going to pray. Because you will need grace to fulfill this sign. You are going to pray and say, Lord, over what you have called me to do, I will endure over the preparation I'm in the school of the spirit it does not yet appear but I will endure 
Lord, men are mocking me, but I will endure. My finances are mocking me. My lack of marriage, my lack of childbirth is mocking me, but I will endure. Lift your voice and pray. A supply of grace. A supply of grace. I refuse to be under pressure. Pray. Pray. Grace. 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 To continue in the midst of harsh conditions. Grace. To continue in the midst of persecution. Grace. To continue. That ministry must not die. That anointing must not die. That business must not die. That job seeking must not end. I endure to the end. I endure to the end. There's no food now, but I endure. I don't have friends now, but I endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, I want to encourage everybody in preparation for miracle service on Friday. Listen to this message again. Make sure you get it. Please, just listen to these instructions. Listen to this message again. Get all the messages I've preached on greatness and success and listen to it. I want this rain to fall on everybody. Listen to it. The rain must fall. Because if the clouds be full, see, let me tell you, before the end of this year, there will be an emergence of kingdom millionaires right here. Yes, it will happen. It's not just by claiming. This is the pathway. I'm showing you how. Before the end of this year, men will step into levels of anointing many of you will you, you will be so exceptionally to scare you submit yourself to the dealings submit yourself to the prunings the teachings may be very hard on you but don't take it personal take it as god building you to be a champion the person who loves you is the one who will not leave you the way you are a friend will pat you the way you are you see that hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.